Hello YouTube, in this video, I'm gonna quickly show how to install Windows 11 on Intel Mac via Bootcamp. So this is quite a simple one. And also on devices that doesn't support the TPM 2.0. So obviously you need to uninstall the previous Windows that you installed on Bootcamp. So after that is done, you can install it. But uh, like while I was trying to install on my 2016 MacBook Pro, so without the touch bar one, so I ran into an issue. So when I selected the version that I wanted to install and then I clicked on the next button, so it showed this uh, error message or uh, so it shows like this PC cannot run Windows 11. So this is because this PC doesn't have a TPM 2.0 module, which is a security module. Uh, that is uh, the minimum requirement that is required to run Windows 11. So if your computer BIOS has this particular option, then you're covered. So if in under security, you don't have that option. So you need to uh, follow this method to install. So this is the Windows 10 beta. So it's a developer beta. So uh, already you can see the icons changed uh, right with the Windows 10 itself. So Windows 11, again, it follows the same kind of icons. So for this uh, thing, you need two ISO files. You need the Windows 11 ISO that you downloaded. So you can search uh, Google or you can search YouTube for the latest video. So most of the ISOs are taken down. So that one you have to look into. And once you have the Windows 11 ISO, then you need to go into the sources folder. So uh, like uh, on Windows 10, you can directly open the ISO files. There is no need of any application. So once you open the ISO file and then go into sources folder, then you have to find a file called install.wim. So this file is the one that we require from the Windows 11. So we don't require any other files or folders that are present in the Windows 11 ISO. So I'm creating a folder on desktop. So just for the sake of simplicity. So on inside this folder, now I'm gonna copy that particular file here. So I'm gonna paste it. So once uh, it gets pasted there, then uh, we need to rename the .wam to .est. So uh, the, only the extension we have to rename it. So once you uh, get to the rename, so I have this uh, extension here .wam. So this has to be visible. So for that, like if uh, you need to go into the view section on your file explorer. So once you are into view, then you have this option called file name extension. So that has to be checked for this to appear. So once that is done, then you can go hit, go there and then click on rename and then uh, remove the WIM and change it to EST. So this is required for all the computers that are uh, running the, uh, I mean, like if you're having a old computer, so that doesn't have the TPM module. So this is quite uh, useful. So this is the only change that you need to do. So once that is done, you require a ISO editor. So any burn, so this is a free ISO editor for Windows. Again, if you're doing this on a Mac, so you might download an, uh, some other uh, ISO editor there. So there are uh, quite a few uh, free ISO editors available. So you can Google that again. So here you need to have a Windows 10 ISO. So this one, you can download it directly from the uh, Windows 10 website. To, so from there, you can download the ISO file. So once you have the Windows 10 ISO file, so again, you need to go into the uh, same folder. So I'm using this AnyBurn and inside the sources folder. And once I'm in, inside the source folder, I need to find this install.est. I'm going to in, uh, remove that one. So this uh, Windows 10 uh, file I am removing and I'm going to add the file that I took from the Windows 11 ISO so this install.est, I'm going to put inside this ISO and then we need to repackage. So all these are carried out with the same software. So that's kind of easy. So just for the sake of simplicity, uh, uh, I'm renaming it to Windows 11. And once that is done, so you can click on create now and it will just repack the ISO and you're good to go. So if you're uh, installing it in, on a Mac, so you, you're gonna just copy the ISO file and put it in the Mac or if you're going to burn a uh, burn to a USB, so you can download something. Uh, I think even the same software can be used or you can use the USB to ISO and you can um, burn the file and uh, install it just how you do a clean install. So here I just have to copy the ISO file on my Mac 
And once that is done, then on Bootcamp, I can set the size. So how much GB? So it uh, obviously it requires 42 uh, gigs of space, free space. So once after that, uh, it will start installing. So uh, so this is the point where uh, it failed last time. So right now it is quite fine and it's asking the license. So, so I'm good here, but there is one catch here. So if you're installing it on a Mac, so the Wi-Fi uh, uh, wireless drivers, it's not present there. So you need a old fashioned uh, LAN cable. So all the new Macs, so they don't have a LAN port. So we need a dongle for that. So once that's connected to LAN, so uh, you're good to go. So that's uh, a hardware requirement. So that's required as of now. So once that is done, so I'm into Windows 11 now. So as you can see the centered home, uh, the start menu, and you have the widget section on the left side of the screen. So it's uh, pretty much optimized for a touch screen device. So once I'm into the start menu, so uh, all apps, so that will take you to the all application list. And all right, let me go into the settings menu. So here we have the system and so the resolution and uh, all such things. So uh, I mean, like it looks just like the Windows 10. So the uh, internal things, but the icons, so they are uh, different. So the Windows 10, the uh, last build, the uh, dev beta, so that has the similar kind of icons. So one change that I liked so much was this one. So. If you see, uh, if you uh, hover over this maximize button, so you get these options to arrange the windows in whatever way you like to. So you can arrange two windows side by side, or you can make a, a larger window and a, a slimmer one, or you can arrange three or even four windows, so which is uh, quite useful. So if you have a widescreen monitor, so like I have uh, on the top, so you can arrange it whatever way you like. So this is really cool one. So earlier also this was possible, but you need to do some weird gesture. So you need to drag and drop to one of the corner and then this would get activated. But this this is really handy. So I can just hover over that. So just like how you get in the Mac OS. So if you hover over that icon, so it shows the split screen, but here it's more enhanced. So you can do three or even four windows at a time. So which is really a good thing. So apart from that, I didn't get to see any other new features. So internally, uh, everything looks similar to what we got from the Windows 10. Again, like if you don't like the centered uh, icons, you can make it go to the left side. So which is a good thing. So again, like if you have a widescreen monitor, so this would come in handy. So all your icons, your start menu, everything would be in the center rather than the side. So which is again, useful thing. So apart from that, you get these uh, new wallpapers, which are much better than what we get uh, uh, before so I uh, really like them so that's all we had for this video subscribe for more content like this and as always stay safe get vaccinated and as always peace